Before I get into the season recap, if you haven't already watched the end of the season and the national championship, definitely watch that video first. Now let's get into the recap of what happened in year nine. What a season, everybody. Welcome back to Kalispell Warhawk football. Year nine had the most exciting ending to any season of this series as we defeated Penn State to secure our second consecutive national championship title. An unlikely fourth quarter comeback was able to send the game to overtime where we then beat Penn State 44 to 37. We've played Penn State twice in this series, once for the Rose Bowl, once for the national title. And in both games, we pulled off a very unlikely path to victory in the game's final minutes. I'm not sure if the goal line stand or our comeback in the fourth quarter was more unlikely, but we have won two of our most incredible games. I think two of our most exciting finishes, both against Penn State. Wow. The game was an absolute roller coaster ride as they owned the first quarter and the third quarter, while we won the second and the fourth quarters. It took two different comebacks, kind of, in this game. We had to come back from being down 6-0 in the first half, which wasn't too much, but we were playing horrible to begin. And then, down by 15 points in the second half, had to get two touchdowns, had to get that two-point conversion that was hardly even in the end zone. And it all leads to another amazing win here for the Kalispell Warhawks. This was, I think the most fun season of the series to see us go and win the national championship in this way again we had to battle through injuries with brandon warren this season justin colbert helped us last season and now it was roshan phillips turn to help out and he did a very good job i really enjoyed this team though in our season let's go to our schedule and just take a rundown through the season Obviously, only a one-loss campaign. That one loss came against Stanford, and it looked like Penn State might duplicate what they did against us, but they weren't able to finish the job. We opened the year in a near defeat, actually, against Texas A&M. Justin Colbert came back to Kalispell, and they were up 24-3 in the first quarter, but they could not score a touchdown beyond that quarter, only settling for field goals as we eventually got going. We had a Mario Townsend pick six that really jump-started the comeback. And who knows, do we become national champions if Mario Townsend doesn't make that play? Townsend was a very key player for us despite not being a starter. So this first game was just fantastic. Kalispell defeats Texas A&M. And then we defeat Minnesota, who ended up finishing the year just 3-9. and nine. We went to Minnesota to go see... Sidney John Charles play in his senior season. I thought that for the most part he was good, but not good enough to beat us. USC, we beat them by 18. And then Stanford. They had our number the entire way. It's hard to shut down our offense the way that they were able to. But they ran the ball really well, 215 yards, and we could not run it. We became a rushing offense this year, and this was the one game where we really struggled to establish any kind of a running identity. Here are the numbers. Marcus Payne had a 75-yard touchdown, and that was the bulk of our production. Otherwise, it just didn't work. Big win over Arizona State, a shutout over Washington State. Then we traveled to Auburn, and the offense was too much for them. A close one against Oregon who ultimately was the second best team really in the Pac-12 conference this year. Very good game. We won that on a game-winning field goal as time expired. This was also one of those games where it showed how much the ground game meant to us as we almost had 300 yards on the ground, 150 going to Kyle Thomas. And then against Washington, they had a really down season. We beat them 30-10. to We took care of Oregon State. And then... After beating Hawaii in a game where they challenged us, they had one win on the season, but we traveled to Hawaii, they threw the ball all over the field against us, and we were horrible on third down. 492 yards passing for Edwards, and we just managed to, uh, to outscore them. 
And then against Cal, that was the big shocker this year. It was supposed to be this really, really good game, and they could not score until the fourth quarter. Brandon Warren came back, and this is where the offense really began to shift. And I began to accept more of this rushing emphasis and being run first and work the pass off of the run. And we went into this game. Brandon Warren had three rushing touchdowns on the season. And then coming off the injury, he gets three in his return. And we stuck with that identity the rest of the way. Beating Arizona in the Pac-12 title game 40-16. to And then ultimately in the national championship, the big win over Penn State. It took everything we had to figure this out in the second half, and we got it done. And it took our red zone offense being very successful as well. Five touchdowns and six trips. Never before have we run the ball as well as we did this season. We had one of the most productive offenses in college football. And we're not necessarily like a top rushing team. We had one of the top rushing marks. We played 14 games though, so that does skew things a little bit. And points per game toward the top here at about 37 points per game. And in terms of the conference, I'm assuming we had the best rushing attack overall. And that looks to be not true at all. Oregon, better than us. But we obviously were still very good at running the football. We had 35 rushing touchdowns. And then you combine that with just a dominant defense in points allowed. We were third best in the conference, but we also had the most sacks. We produced the most interceptions. This was a really, really good team. I think that our offense has really improved in the red zone too. I know I've talked about in many a recap about how we have to get better in the red zone. And we had 42 touchdowns in 64 trips and just 13 field goals. So I'd say that's a big improvement from where we've been before in this series. Still though, the giveaways were a big problem for us. We actually led the Pac-12 in giving the football away. And cleaning that up is going to be an emphasis of next year. And it should hopefully be uh, a big improvement. Now we have some of the past records here for UAB, the team I replaced when I made Kalispell here, but many of these records have been set by Kalispell players, and here are the, the record holders to this point. Brandon Warren, the most touchdown passes. His game-tying touchdown ended up passing Marquise Walker for the career record. So... Into the record books, Warren the most in a career, most in a game. Not season though, that is still JR Battle. Marquise Walker, most yards throwing in a career. JR Battle has it for the season. We'll have to pass up uh, the 481 though to get that game record. For rushing, unfortunately, it's been tough to beat these records. Roscoe Sheridan, most rushing yards in a career. Receiving wise, Hayden John Charles, most receiving yards in a career and receptions. I need to tally up all the numbers to figure out who owns the rest of these records. I wish that it would clear out the history books when you do a series like this, if you want it to be. And then Mo Collins, most sacks in a season. He's only a sophomore, and I think he's going to be maybe the best edge rusher that we ever have in this series. I think a big part of our success this year was having really good coordinators come to our team. We ended up getting a maxed out defensive coordinator and a nearly maxed out offensive coordinator who I assume will get head coaching jobs after this season is over and we'll see who they're replaced by. That's always kind of uh, an uneasy part of the offseason, especially after a year so good and successful. But here are the overall season stats. Hayden John Charles was able to throw his first passes in his career. He did throw a touchdown. I'll get to career numbers here in a moment. Rashawn Phillips able to play a role on this team starting for three games. Brandon Warren, 18 touchdowns but 14 interceptions. Hoping that we can get that closer to single digits next season for the entire team. Running the football was the story of the year, and we had the big run on our side. We've had the big play offense before, but never have we had a big play rushing offense like that. That's 45 runs right there that got us over 20 yards. That means, assuming that there are a lot of runs here over 20 yards, like we don't know if some of those went for 70 or 50, although we do know 
remembering past games that many did if you only counted our rushes that went over 20 yards we definitely had over like 1200 rushing yards if all these runs only went 20 that's still 900 so we had so many breakaway runs and the vast majority of our production seemed to come off of long runs over 20 yards Kyle Thomas, 12.06 and 10 scores here as a senior. Marcus Payne, unsure if he'd be able to produce this season. His speed definitely showed valuable. I would compare him to maybe a Latavius Murray or a Darren McFadden type of running back who has the size, but not necessarily the power you'd expect them to have. They're still strong backs, but they win more, it seems, with their speed. And Marcus Payne certainly won with his speed a lot, having the best average here out of our main running backs. Brandon Warren, seven touchdowns, four coming after his injury. If he stays for a senior campaign, running the football is going to be a main emphasis of Warren's game. So I hope he comes back. But as a 99 overall junior, I wonder if he does try to go pro early. Marty Belafonte did not run the ball much after fumbling twice in the opening week. We let him stick to returns mainly. Austin Jenkins had a lot of mop-up carries and garbage time, and he showed a lot of ability on those plays. So I'm excited to see him get a larger role as his career continues. This is a glitch. Boogie Turner never ran the football. I'm not sure why it happened. Dustin Payment, 121 and a touchdown. He'll be back next season as the primary backup, it appears. Brandon Tolbert, 11 yards and a touchdown. And a few more here down the list. For receiving... We didn't really have the best receiving season for much of the year. Carl Joyce had a very slow start and finally took off. He had a 10-catch game when Roshan Phillips was starting. But it didn't seem that Joyce got open downfield as much as you'd like to see, and that's why his yards per reception bottomed out from 17.2 just down to 10. He became kind of a screen receiver and did a lot of underneath work. I don't want to see him have 5'11 as a senior. I'd like to see him get over 1,000 and get some long catches for us. Justin Payne was our most reliable receiver, though. He has very good hands. He's a great route runner. And he took off after a good campaign a season ago. Five touchdowns this year, a 75-yarder in the national championship, and over 1,000 yards total. Then there's Hayden John Charles, who was able to best his freshman numbers, but overall... Just the passing game got off to a slow start. We were never a good passing team this year, and I think his production suffered as a result, but still over 200 catches, over 3,000 yards. It was an amazing Kalispell career for Hayden John Charles, and I can't believe it's already complete. John Charles is one of the legends to come out of this school, one of the absolute best players, and I, I'm really happy that we were able to give him an amazing career in this series. Kyle Thomas, 285 on receptions. Antoine Knightley used very sparingly if the starter struggled to produce. Knightley was a starter, but obviously these three were higher priorities. And then Knightley just kind of made a few catches here and there, but had some big ones in the national championship, including a one-handed catch on a third down. I like to use Knightley more in his junior season, however. Marcus Payne, 97 yards. And Reggie Jackson. It seemed that whenever we get down the field, Hayden, he got tired. He didn't run his uh, conditioning, I guess, this season. Reggie Jackson had four touchdowns, including one in the national championship. And he's got five touchdowns now on 21 career catches. And all he does is come in, really, when Hayden's tired and the occasional two tight end set. Tyrone Houston had three catches, but the catch that won't be on the stat sheets was the big one, that two-point conversion. And Brandon Warren, of course, caught a touchdown this year, thrown by Hayden John Charles, one of my favorite highlights of the entire year. We had a very good offensive line season, as I've been developing this line for a couple of years. We're going to be losing Mike Hill this year, our right guard, who was a big reason why we had so many big runs. However, we're going to be returning, it appears, four starters from this season, including a freshman, Brandon Smith, who had a very good year. So I think the future is still bright. And the player taking over at right guard, I expect, will be Johnny Cabral. Redshirt freshman. I've been really excited about Cabral since we got him. And I think he is the perfect player to take over from Mike Hill. 
He has work to do when it comes to pass protection, but we are a running offense now, and he has the ability to get out in front with that 96 acceleration, 87 run blocking, and especially for all the zone running I like to do, he's going to be awesome. But also, if you want to run with power, when Montreal Bonds comes in, I think he can do that as well. His strength is adequate, and I think that Cabral is going to be great for the next few years. Defensively, we have a powerhouse here in Kalispell, and I think I've done a really good job of building a scheme that fits the players. And then, of course, in the red zone, we are just way too good. Most teams have no chance when they get down inside the 20. You got to get some long touchdowns on us because when the field shrinks, we are at our best. We had 30 sacks this year between Collins and Boogie Turner. I believe those are now the number one and number two single sack seasons in Kalispell history. Those two are dynamic. Mario Townsend was also very good this year. He had the pick six in the opening game. He had big plays in the national championship, and it felt like he swung so many games by getting sacks or big hits. He had a great season for a player who was only really in our sub packages, although he does play a lot. I have many different nickel packages I like to go to, whether it's the 335 or the 245 or your basic nickel defense. And Townsend next year has a chance to start. Chad Moore is going to be graduating after a four sack campaign. And I think that Mario has a chance to take over the starting right end job. We'll see. Xavier Bozeman is set to graduate. We're going to lose more like I mentioned. We'll go through all the graduates here in a moment. Wesley Merrill, another run defending punisher. I think that losing him could be a big blow to run defense. He had 19 tackles for a loss. Bozeman 101 had an interception this year and I'll never forget the game he had as a junior helping us win the Pac-12 championship the best game of his career Oscar Bryant had two national championship interceptions bringing his career total to seven he had a knack for dropping INTs in his career so he did not get more but he was a very good cover corner Tommy Jordan, I'm excited to see what his role continues to evolve into. He does play a good bit now and maybe even more as a junior. Juno Springs, I think that all of us got to be big Juno fans at this point. He had a huge pick six late in the season in a key game. He had a forced fumble in the same game. And Juno is the closest thing I've ever gotten to a player resembling Antoine Winfield, one of my favorite Minnesota Vikings of all time. A smaller corner who was very good in zone coverage, who could hit, very good tackler. Juno's been the player I've been looking for for years in these series. Daniel Foster was up and down as a true freshman, but I think that his ceiling as a press cover corner is just incredible. 94 man already, the speed to go with it. It's going to take some more work, but I think by the time he's a junior, you won't want to test his side of the field. Garcia had two picks. Chris Baker wins it in the national championship with the game ceiling INT. What a year and what a team we have here. Such a fun team to just follow and just to see who rises to the occasion. And oftentimes it's been Mario Townsend. Here are some of the more secondary stats. We had one safety this year, thanks to Juno. That's right. And here are career stats to this point. And obviously, the seniors are graduating. Rashawn Phillips was a backup his entire time here, but he got some real playing time this season. On the ground, Kyle Thomas graduates with 18 rushing touchdowns and over 2,800 rushing yards, 5.8 a carry. Very good career for him, three years as a main running back for us. A lot of big plays in there. He had just as many as a senior, over 20 yards, as he did his entire career prior. Over 300 carries. He had so much success. Let's look at the receiving numbers for him. Probably a little underutilized in this regard, but still got some production there. Marcus Payne's already at 14 touchdowns on the ground. Let's go receiving Hayden John Charles. We've seen these numbers. Carl Joyce now 2100. And the way Joyce can get his yards, I mean, I could see him passing up Hayden next year in career receiving yards as long as those deep balls come back. 
Both Joyce and Payne are set to be seniors a season from now, along with Marcus Payne. So we're going to have a lot of players moving on here in the next couple of years. Thomas Roberts will be back next year after being redshirted. Hopefully he sticks around to be our number one tight end. But Drake Maddox is also coming in, so I'll have to decide if I want to redshirt him or not. Defensively, tackles for loss. Wesley Merrill had 53 in his great Kalispell career, four sacks and an INT. He did one thing well, and that was punish ball carriers. Three forced fumbles. Not much against the air for him. Boogie Turner has 27 career sacks now. He has gotten better each and every season. Mario Townsend, what a career he's had so far. Very steady contributor. 14 sacks now in his career. A couple picks, a touchdown, got some pass deflections and forced fumbles. A lot of tackles for loss, too, at 40. Mo Collins, 17 sacks. He had just one sack as a freshman, so this was a huge year. Not necessarily out of nowhere, because I expected him to be good. Bozeman has graduated now. Chad Moore. Marty Belafonte has four career kickoff return touchdowns and one punt return touchdown. Let's go check on the roster now. Obviously, we're going to lose our seniors, but we've been very lucky to this point with players never choosing to leave early for the NFL draft. Now that we have so many good juniors, I wonder if this is the year that breaks that trend. We've never had a player leave early. We don't often have players transfer away. We've never had a player transfer to Kalispell. So is this the year that maybe a junior leaves early? And could that be Brandon Warren? He's already accomplished so much, winning two national championships and the Rose Bowl. The Brandon Warren era has brought a lot of success, and I wonder if he chooses to leave early. We're going to lose Phillips. We will not lose Baker unless he leaves early. I think that's a possibility. Merrill's going to be gone. Hayden John Charles, Chad Moore, Kyle Thomas, Oscar Bryant. Joyce, I assume, will be back along with Marty Belafonte, Justin Payne. But we'll see if there are any surprises that come our way in the offseason. I feel like we've been very lucky and maybe we're due for some unlucky occurrences once we get to the offseason. I also wonder if there's a chance we could lose a key recruit from last season. I didn't redshirt him because I wanted to get him playing time, but we are so good at linebacker. You didn't hear me talk about James Huggins much. He only had eight tackles. And I wonder if this could be a, an Aaron Higdon-like situation where we had him on the team, we played him, but not much, and then he left to UAB. I wonder if Huggins chooses to transfer after being such a highly touted recruit and barely seeing the field. If he does stay... With Bozeman gone, with Merrill gone, there's definitely a spot for Huggins to step in. And then next year, we're going to see Ronnie Howard. He is a lot like Glenn Hayes. They can play running back or defensive back. I want to play Howard, though, on defense. And I'm really excited to see him once he gets into the action. We'll have to get some new corners developing, and I wonder if Howard could be moved there. And then All-Americans, Morris Wallace was first team All-American at quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner Michael Lewis was also an All-American. Here's what Lewis did this year, after almost no production in his first couple of years, well, he had some production, and then 2,100 yards this season and 16 touchdowns on the ground combined with six rushing or receiving touchdowns. So he was the Heisman winner, very great season for him, 99 speed, 97 elusiveness, Wow. Here are the rest of the All-Americans, though. A lot for Penn State. And then Maurice Collins, first team All-American, along with Boogie Turner, Mario Townsend, and Xavier Bozeman. Oh, and these four guys, five guys as well. Kalispell with a bunch of first team All-Americans. Juno Springs, Baker, Akinjide, Rick Thomas, and Balafonte for second teamers. Still nothing here on the offensive side. And then Chad Moore made it, although that's really surprising to me. Wesley Merrill also makes it. For freshmen, Johnny Cabral, Brandon Smith. Smith actually played. I'm not sure why Cabral's on there. Daniel Foster also made it. For all conference, Kyle Thomas was first team. Rodney Hall, Mike Hill, Noah Manuai, Maurice Collins, Chad Moore, Boogie, Townsend, Bozeman, and so many others. For second team, we get Marcus Payne on there. Nothing here, though, for Brandon Warren. 
although his numbers weren't great, so I understand it. Hayden John Charles, Ryan Westergren at center, and a few more defenders, of course. We currently have the number 18 ranked recruiting class in the country. It doesn't have a lot of players, but they are very impactful. Six of them are four stars or better. Let's see what the next future Warhawks bring to the table. The big one we have to talk about was an early season insta commit. I did a recruiting special and Montrell Bonds was the star of it. He's a four star power back from Newport Beach, California, 6'2", 247 and he is going to be maybe our number one running back next season. He's going to be given the shot. 89 speed, 83 trucking, 77 break tackle. He's got some good athleticism in his game as well. He can run routes. He can catch. He is not limited, and that's what you see out of the best running backs today in the current state of football. There are big backs who do the things that normally big backs don't. They don't always have great elusiveness, change of direction, receiving ability. But then you have players like Le'Veon Bell and Todd Gurley that completely shatter that mold. And then Montrell Bonds could be the next in line. I compared him to Todd Gurley in the prospect video, and I think he has the same skill set. I want to see if he's just as explosive, though. He's not the only running back that we're bringing in, however. Jim Jackson was actually ranked higher, and Jackson has less speed, 85, but he has good athleticism as well, a dynamic spin move at 90. I don't think he's as good as Bonds, but he certainly has a chance to be a great running back, and maybe these two become a tandem at some point. We still have Marcus Payne, though, so we'll see how it all happens next year. We have a new guard in Josh Schmidt to help out the offensive line depth. He'll be developing for a while. Anthony Payne at middle linebacker. We've always had good linebacker depth, and it's paid off time and time again. He has a very well-rounded skill set. Luke Irvin. He could be the quarterback of the future. And if Brandon Warren were to leave early, next year would be really, really weird. I don't know what I'd do yet. But Luke Irvin, he is a pocket passer. He's very accurate, but he's not very mobile. So if he becomes QB1, the offense will change again. Drake Maddox is coming to Kalispell. I'm very excited about this, especially in the year we lose Hayden John Charles to the pros. 85 speed, 75 catching. It might take him a while here. The route running and hands are a bit low, but he has the physical traits to be a great vertical threat tight end. Ross Mastorovich fits the scheme I'm trying to build defensively with press heavy man cover corners. He's not very good in zone, but I think he has a lot of the same skills that Daniel Foster has. Ty Navarro is a pure red zone threat at receiver, 6'4", 190, but not very dynamic as an athlete. And then Trey Walker, 6'8", 240. My plan is to play Trey on the edge with his 73 speed and 85 acceleration. He has 77 power moves and 74 block shedding. I would consider playing him at linebacker, but I don't think he has the range. So we'll put him up on the line of scrimmage and let him do some damage. And those are the players we have so far, but I'm still trying to add Shannon Somerville to the class. He's a very impactful defensive end, and I love going after these talented edge rushers. Won't be easy, though, in this battle against Ole Miss, and there's still Bill Long. Can we go after both these players heavily? We'll see. Washington currently has the lead, and he would be just a wrecking machine in the middle, maybe even better than Boogie Turner after a couple of years. There are a few more players I'm going after, have some downfield threats at wide receiver I'd like to bring in because we are a bit thin at that spot on the roster. But that overall wraps up Kalispell Dynasty Season 9. The offseason is coming your way this coming weekend on Saturday, early afternoon. We'll start preparing for year 10 of the series. I don't know when Kalispell is going to be complete, but I am saying now the series will go at least... 11 seasons and therefore be the longest dynasty I have ever done and then closer to Madden 20's release later towards the beginning of football season I'll be evaluating things again to see when I think Kalispell should be complete and also looking at how successful we are obviously we've had a long stretch of success and typically this is where you see series like this wrap up but we're all so invested and the series is so much fun that we're not going to end it anytime soon. However, maybe uh, after another handful of months, 
it's time for a change. Time for something new. We'll see. But thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting the series and the channel. I appreciate it. Leave any thoughts you have on year nine down below in the comment section. And I can't wait to get into the off season and start preparing for year 10, especially with Montreal Bonds. I'm so excited to see him play. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll be seeing you again soon. Have a great day, everybody.